Over the years, elections in Africa and some few African countries have been termed as democratic, with others regarded as a thorn in the flesh of some countries as they have experienced pre-elections, elections and post-elections drama which have resulted in the arrest, torture and many more. Today, August 24th, 2022, Angolans are heading to the polls to elect their next president and members of the National Assembly. Assembly. Incumbent President uh, Joao Lorenzo of the ruling popular uh, movement for the liberation of Angola MPLA party is hoping for a second term in office after he has governed the orange country since 2017. Elections in countries like Kenya, Ghana, Rwanda just to cite this few have been termed democratic with most recently Kenya proving the contrary with the issue of Raila Odinga opposition leader contesting the results. According to a study carried out by the Marcustin Institute, the OS international actors in the endeavors of a country trying to promote a democratic change. On today's edition of Voice It, we shall be understanding to what extent elections on the African continent can deliver on democracy. Stay with us. Greetings once more, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you immensely for joining us on today's edition of Voice Seed over your Pan African channel for you media. Of course, today we are talking elections on the African continent, and of course, elections is at a time when Angolans are heading to the polls to vote for the next president as well as members of the National Assembly. And joining us all the way from the United States of America, precisely Washington, this afternoon is Dr. Nyaka. Laguka. He's a Pan Africanist as well as a political analyst. Good day, sir. Greetings, Dr. Nyaka. Okay, we're going to kick off, but before we come down into analyzing today's topic of discussion, I'd like you to take a listen to this detailed report compared to us by our news conference. Amid pre-elections and post-elections drama recorded in most African countries, Angolans are heading to the polls in what is expected to be the closest election since the country first allowed a multi-party vote in 1992. The key question is whether voters will once again pick the left-wing people's movement for liberation of Angola MPLA, which has run the country for half a century or back the central right national union for total independence unita under the charismatic Abdebeto Costa Jr. and if it will serve on democracy. The MPLA party is currently heard by incumbent President Joao Lorenco and derives most of its support from its roles in ending Angola's 1975-2000 to 2000 civil war against unita. The two anti-colonial guerrilla movements were locked in a struggle following Angola's independence from Portugal in 1975. But high unemployment, corruption and the repression of civil liberties has hit the country's popularity amongst the youth. Tensions have always grown between political parties and the opposition, especially when it comes to elections and consequently it leads to violence, arrest of political figures. Going down memory lane, post-election tensions in Ivory Coast led to the death of over 3,000 people after former leader Laurent Gbagbo refused to concede defeat. Most recently is that of Kenya, where a few hours to the result proclamation, there was confrontation, and recently we saw opposition leader Raila Odinga contesting the result after the Independent Electoral and Boundary Commission declared William Ruto winner of the country's August 9 polls, contrary to the fact it was termed as one of the most peaceful and democratic on the continent. All of this is to say that the chances of elections serving as a litmus paper for democracy are slim. Nonetheless, chances are time could change the hands of things. Haven't listened to that report, it's high time. I welcome our guest joining us all the way from Washington, Dr. Nyaka Lagoke. Greetings once more, sir. Morning. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. 
So the first question I'd like to ask you this afternoon is, in your opinion, what do you think is democracy? Oh, okay. Uh, democracy can be uh, defined as a system of governance mm -hmm. uh, whereby uh, the people uh, have uh, the ability to choose uh, their own representatives. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the, the, the type of democracy that we know today is a, a representative democracy. And then uh, people go to the polls and they choose a president and they choose uh, members of the parliament. And then uh, this is uh, what we've been seeing and then uh, the great text or maybe the first major example in our modern history has been uh, the United States of America uh, when uh, they succeeded in defeating the British crown when uh, the world or when uh, Europe was under the system of monarchy uh, the United States of America even though slavery was in force uh, they spoke about the government of the people, by the people, and then they mentioned the concept of democracy. Mm -hmm. And then this is, that model was going to become very uh, important, like in world history. Of course, uh, in England, uh, there was already a different type of system called constitutional monarchy, you know, after the glorious revolution. Uh, but uh, the United States came with the concept of democracy, mm -hmm. uh, which is not a new concept, but mm -hmm. they've revived it. And then since that time, uh, many in the world are uh, going to the polls, electing the officials. And this is what we've been seeing. This is uh, how we can define democracy. Mm -hmm. Completely different in a republic, different mm -hmm. from a monarchy, from totalitarianism, from fascism, and many other uh, ideologies or systems that can lead to systems uh, in, in which the people are oppressed and deprived uh, from the civil and then the, the liberties. Okay, thank you, Dr. Nyaka, for the elaborate definition. Of course, today we are discussing this issue because Angolans are heading to the polls to vote for their new president, as I earlier mentioned, as well as members of their National Assembly. Lately, we have, re we have uh, witnessed the elections that took place in Kenya. So what assertion, what analysis do you make of uh, elections on the African continent as a whole? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, you know, of course... Uh, we are moving. Uh, we are moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. uh, in the aftermath of uh, when the founding fathers of of the African nations, when they conquered independence, uh, because they wanted to uh, reduce uh, tensions and division in those respective African countries, mm -hmm. all of them across the board. They agreed on the one-party system, even though uh, during colonial time in several countries, just to mention Ivory Coast and Ghana, they were a multi-party multi system. And then, uh, so the one-party system has been enforced, and then with uh, diverse fortunes, and then later on, there was going to be the wind of democratization uh, that started in Asia and that was going to blow across the world and on the continent of Africa. And that wind of democratization coincided uh, with the liberation of Nelson Mandela uh, in 1990, February 11, 1990. And then that year, there were a mass protest in Africa. I was a student and then uh, as a student, uh, uh, I played that role uh, with many and then we uh, wanted more freedom and then we requested a multi-party system in Ivory Coast and then everywhere uh, in many other African countries see the same thing happened and people organized several national uh, several national conferences mm -hmm. in order to build uh, the, the new new African country uh, African countries with uh, that the multi-party system but uh, uh, some were there were some cases that were better, some, some of them were not as, as great. But uh, it is difficult today uh, for, for Africa to go back to the one-party system. 
So that is one positive thing that you know we can talk about. But the second element uh, that I always talk about when I'm, I'm, I'm having conversations on democracy is that uh, the, the, the election is the reflection of the state of democracy in a country. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again. Mm -hmm. The election that people praise so much is generally the reflection of the state of democracy in a country. In other words, mm -hmm. uh, if uh you know main like the in the country as uh, the leadership and the people they are not engaged in order to foster and to make democracy a reality when they go to the polls the, the elections uh, are going to become the reflection of how the society has been functioning the same thing happened in africa the same thing is happening in kenya the same thing is happening in angola this is uh, what we know and uh, so uh yes election is a, is a, is a, is a uh, you know the organization of election is a, is a, is a very important uh, but uh, the most important thing is to advance the cause of freedom and justice in the society and then fair and transparent election can only be the outcome of the evolution of the of democracy in the society mm -hmm. From one topic to the next, I'd like to ask you, having followed your definition of democracy in Africa, I'd like to ask you, what are the criteria uh, that constitute an acceptable election that can actually uh, lead to uh, democratic uh, governance in uh, various African countries? Well, the first one is that when the winner and then the loser uh, agree that the elections were fair, uh, I know that sometimes uh, uh, leaders in the opposition uh, can, out of bad faith, uh, even though they can be real losers, uh, they can still denounce a fraud. But the first criteria is the criterion is to say, you know what, uh, when somebody has lost and he says, I have lost, and everyone agrees on uh, the outcome of an election, that is the first thing. Uh, but before that, uh, uh, people have to agree on uh, the electoral uh, uh, listing mm -hmm. uh, because uh, in several countries uh, voters are, are not on the on the electoral list because of those who want to rig the election they use that as a way of uh, in order to uh, to 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 expel some people from the electoral list. That's the first thing. Number two, people have to agree on the process. Uh, it means that the electoral listing and then the way the elections are going to be uh, conducting, con uh, conducted. And number three, uh, the day of the results, uh, people have to agree on the data that come from the different uh, uh, voting uh, regions. So when we see consensus and a common like agreement on every step of the process, and then people agree on the results, then we can see that the election was a, a successful election. Mm. So away from that, now Angolans are heading to the polls, and of course, the country, which is an oil-rich country, uh, is facing economic crises as uh, repercussions from the war in Ukraine. Do you think these elections can actually lead to uh, the liberation of this nation, given its economic uh, uh, impasse? Uh, you know the the situation in Angola. It is a uh, it is a uh, you know I don't like to talk about Africa like that, but mm -hmm. it's uh, it's, uh, it's unfortunate mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, you know they had the opportunity uh, to be a very like a real developed country in Africa, mm -hmm. uh, uh, given the fact that uh, uh, you know they had there was a time oil. Mm -hmm. oil booming and so and they had it and then even today with the war in ukraine mm -hmm. we know that uh, the oil prices are skyrocketing so you know they have that resource but uh, the news that we receive you know from 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 angola uh, are not always uh, beautiful news uh, because as you know as it was described in the report as we read 
uh, even though the current president tried in order to fight against corruption, uh, but uh, you know this, the country is still suffering from corruption, and then there is that unfair distribution of resources in Angola, and then if today the Angolans are thinking about uh, putting uh, like uh, taking out of power the MPLA, then it means that uh, there is a that there is a high level of dissatisfaction in the country, mm -hmm. and then the current president, even though uh, he tried mm -hmm. to go after the family of the former president Eduardo dos Santos, I think that he has not responded uh, to the to the expectations of the people in the country, and uh, so this election can be uh, things can be can be a, a, things can change, but uh, I am not uh, because I I don't know. Uh, the, 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 the challenger uh, who is trying to become the president, I cannot anticipate and say uh, the person when he comes is going to be uh, like Thomas Sankara or he's going to be like Kwame Nkrumah. Because that is the type of leaders we need to see in Africa. People who are selfless, uh, people who care about the country, uh, people who are willing uh, to put the resources of the countries uh, at the disposal of the African masses. And then until then, everything that we're doing, uh, we are not doing the right thing. Yeah, exactly. You said it all that uh, the leaders of today can never ever be like those of in those days, like you you cited uh, Kwame Krumah, uh, Thomas Sankara, just to name this few. But again, uh, we know that uh, there's just these statements that South African President Cyril Ramaphosa once said that Africa has made a lot of progress when it comes to elections, transparency, and democracy. So now, what do you what do you think needs to be done, given what we are seeing in Kenya? at the moment with Raila Onzinga contesting the results which was earlier termed as one of the most democratic on the African continent? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, like I said, uh, people, like when we talk about the election, we want to be, we want to, uh, we want to see, uh, because I have spoken, you know, because mm -hmm. of what I do, I, uh, I read, but I have spoken to people on the ground uh, during the election in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, uh the reality is that i think four out of seven members of the electoral commissions did not agree yes with the result that were about to be so we cannot say that the election was uh, transparent you know people can go to the polls uh, they can vote but now when people comes now to 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 count the votes and then uh the president of the electoral commission he wants to give the results and the other members do not mm -hmm. agree then there is an issue, issue. Mm -hmm. so we cannot say that the election in kenya was that democratic uh that is the first element uh the second thing i think people have to continue the struggle people have to continue the battle because democracy people have to know democracy as always and will always be an unfinished business mm -hmm. i am here in the united states as uh, seen as the uh, uh, the beacon of democracy in the world and then we know that uh, uh, last year, of this year, uh, when Donald Trump uh, uh, lost the election, uh, we saw that uh, Trump uh, was about to change the outcome of the elections, or uh, that his people went to the to the capital because they thought they were doing the right thing, doing the revolution for Trump to be in power. So. What does it mean? It means that uh, are not infallible. Human beings, uh, they have uh, those temptations. Uh, when somebody has power, he is tempted in order to abuse the power that he has. Mm -hmm. Therefore, uh, people have to try and put into place systems uh, to, you know, to, to, uh, to, to, uh, to prevent the abuses of power in the society. Mm -hmm. So if what happens here uh, is happening in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. It is only when we have uh, people with a high level of consciousness, uh, people who are thinking about the interests of nations, mm -hmm. uh, people who are thinking about the interests of people. It is only when we have those people, they can say, you know what, I lost the election, I can leave power. Mm -hmm. uh, in the case of Nigeria, Jonathan Goodluck, when he lost the election, 
was not willing to go. Uh, he wanted. He was. He was not a. He did not want to leave power. Uh, even uh, Obasanjo that we talk about today, Obasanjo wanted to change the constitution in Nigeria to mm -hmm. be in power for a third term, and Nigeria was about to experience another civil war. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, for me, people have to go through the struggle, and it is not just some individuals. Uh, we have been talking about all the constituencies in the society, our political leaders, and then civil society, and many other groups. They have to make sure that they fight and they preserve democracy, because if we don't have democracy the way it is, uh, then it is going to become complicated. We may go back to some unending, uh, and on some some uh, eternal cycles of violence in the society. Now, do not get me wrong. I am not saying that uh, the model of democ the democracy, the model that we are experiencing is a perfect one. I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. That's why people have to work to perfect that model. In the case of Africa, maybe not today, another time, we can have a conversation about what could be that model of democracy that can uh, fit in the African realities. That, that's another conversation. Mm -hmm. So, if I've listened to you, you will say that elections probably is not really a true test of uh, democracy in Africa. Apart from elections, what other measures do you think uh, African governments can put in place in order for uh, a democratic governance to finally pull through? Oh, okay. So, if, as you ask the question, Don, let's go for it. So the first, like, uh, the, the, the thing that people have to do, mm -hmm. and I said it a little bit, uh, people, uh, I think that when, uh, you know, somebody's in power, mm -hmm. and then if, uh, uh, you know, the leader wants, uh, you know, to think about the, the needs of the masses, is to try and attend uh, to the needs of the people. Mm -hmm. That is basic. Uh, Lula da Silva, from Brazil, uh, when he was about to leave power, mm -hmm. uh, he had 80% of the approval rating in Brazil. Why? Because in Brazil, good politics, it is about meeting the needs of the people. I know in some African countries, people try to do that. You know, we have Botswana, we have the example of, of Mauritius, I understand that, but I'm talking about the case of Lula because I read the, the, I read and then I can quote that that doing good politics is about meeting the needs of the people. So that is what every African president should be doing instead of thinking about self enrichment or instead of thinking about meeting the needs of multinationals. Mm -hmm. Instead of thinking about uh, giving all the contracts you know to foreign co companies, uh, the first thing is to meet the needs of the people. Uh, give providing health care, mm -hmm. building schools, uh, uh, then many other things. And then beside that, uh, the, there should be a fair uh, redistribution of resources. That is uh, the second thing. Now, even the model of democracy, the way we see it in Africa, uh, because in the United States here, mm -hmm. it is the winner takes all. The whoever wins the election imposes rule, and then he prints his people everywhere. This is what people think that this is how people think that this is how democracy should be. But we are there are several ways, you know, mm -hmm. to, to you know to to uh, to to implement a democratic system in a country. In the case of Africa, we need to try and find the middle ground uh, between uh, the, the 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 needs of the minority and then the rule of the majority. I'm not saying that people should build, uh, they should uh, put together some union, a uh, national union government. That's not what I'm saying. But they have to find a way to build that new social contract, that kind of consensus, so that even those who have lost the election mm -hmm. can be involved uh, mm -hmm. in the management uh, of, of, of the country. But if we don't do that, those who are going to be in the opposition, they're going to feel ostracized and they're going to try and do everything possible uh, to prevent the, the, the ones who are in power uh, to succeed so that they can have a chance to come to power. So now uh, we can uh, think about the, the, the system that needs to be uh, uh, redesigned in Africa. And then uh, one of the things I always talk about, 
I think that uh, we need to have uh, two chambers in the parliament in Africa. Uh, one chamber can be composed of the representatives of political parties, and the other chamber can be uh, composed uh, of uh, uh, different constituencies in the society. Mm. Uh, for instance, uh, the farmers. Uh, in Ivory Coast, the farmers represent 60%, after they provide 60% of the resources of the country, but they, they are nowhere to be found when people are uh, taking the, 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 some decisions of vote, uh, voting some law, adopting mm -hmm. and voting some laws uh, that are going to have an impact uh, in, like in the, in the social and economic activities. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, something that I can propose. And then, of course, another time we can give more details. Okay. Given a situation where African leaders has yet to find a common ground, as you earlier mentioned, uh, with regards to elections leading to democracy, if we are still to stay on uh, elections, these are, uh, 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 this way of elections, what measures do you think could be put in place to ensure that uh, the elections that are being held in different African countries definitely should lead to democracy? No, I think the burden... And on this, though, the burden uh, is not on the leaders. I'm mm -hmm. telling the people who are in power. Mm -hmm. Because you have, to, I'm saying that, you know, pe so people can be in power. And the, like I said, there are so many temptations. And then, see, like, how can I say it? Let's say uh, if somebody goes to school and then the person who wants to have to succeed and the person studies. And then the person goes there and the person cannot fail or cannot succeed or mm -hmm. the person has, has the feel, impression that he is failing the exam. As a human being, mm -hmm. you may be tempted if you can. If you do not have strong values, you may be tempted you know, to, to go and cheat in order for you to pass the exam. Mm -hmm. That is the same thing that is happening to mm -hmm. those who are in power. It's not like there are, there are many of them. Uh, it's not like they are like Sassoon Gesso or Blaise Compaoré mm -hmm. or many other leaders. It's not like it's not like all the leaders are like that. There are some who want to do the right thing, and then somehow, maybe because you know they are not that great, things happen, and now they can start thinking about uh, how they're going to uh, to remain in power. Here in the in the United States, uh, like when Obama was in power, uh, uh, the first term of Obama. I was like compromising too much because he was already thinking about his second term. And then because of that, uh, like he failed to deliver on some of his promises. So my point is that the burden for a true democratic society in a country has to be on the, those who really want the country to live by the democratic principles. Mm -hmm. You cannot count on the Africaners in South Africa, uh, who were leading South Africa uh, in the context of apartheid to all of a sudden understand, you know, the beauty of freedom, or it cannot count on them, you know, to be, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to have an epiphany and say, you know what, uh, we have uh, uh, oppressed and exploited those, uh, those black people so long, but now it is time for us, you know, to give them freedom. No, it was uh, the resilience. Uh, the, consist the consistency of the people who were fighting. It was the determination of mm -hmm. people in, Af in, in, in South Africa, across the board, first black people and many others, mm -hmm. the Indian, even some white people. It was the mobilization of the leaders in, the, in Africa, mm -hmm. the mobilization of freedom fighters and then justice seekers across the globe and mm -hmm. from all walks of life and from all races. They were the one who imposed the one man, one vote uh, for which Mandela went to prison in 1964. He went to prison because of that. The coup d'etat attempt that he did, it is because they wanted to change the rule under the, the leadership of, of, of the white supremacists. So my point is that it is, the burden is on those who want countries to live by the democratic principles. Mm -hmm. If they succeed, if they do well, then we can see democracy, uh, democracy like in the society. Mm -hmm. And now when people who want democracy in the society, when they take power and they, they do not change and they really abide by the democratic principles, then we can 
hope to see uh, democracy as a cardinal value in those African societies. Mm -hmm. uh, if not, uh, uh, I, let's see, I, don't, I don't want to give uh, some other too many examples, but uh, I just want to stop there. Okay, no problem. You said the burden is not just on the African leaders, but it's probably on those that want to eradicate others. Oh, just uh, just to ask you, you know that Africans, us as Africans, we are those that elect those that become our leaders. So as Africans, as the population, what role do we have to play in, in ensuring that elections, uh, uh, smooth elections are being run and consequently they lead to democracy? Yeah, so as I want to continue on, this, on the previous question, so uh, my, if I want to say that in other words, uh, the people, uh, the freedom fighters, uh, justice seekers, uh, 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 democracy lovers, if I can use that expression, mm -hmm. uh, when I say that the burden is on them, I, always, I also wanted to say that they should make the leaders do the right thing. So if people are, are not invested uh, in the like in the management of the of the, of the countries, if they are dissatisfied, uh, if they care less about who, win, who wins or who does not win, uh, if they are, they are not themselves good citizens, because that is the conversation, and being a good citizen is not just about going to the to, to the to the polls and vote. Being a good citizen is about uh, uh, educating oneself uh, mm -hmm. about well, the, the affairs of the world, the affairs of the country. Uh, being a good citizen, it is about caring for the community. Being a good citizen, it is about taking care of cleaning like the communities or neighborhoods. It is about trying to meet the needs of the people uh, like that you can in your community. Mm -hmm. So if you have that kind of heart and if you have that kind of perspective, therefore you will care about who is going to be in power because you know that the decision he's going to take or she's going to take are going to affect you as an individual or the decision are going to affect now the collective or the decision are going to affect the communities in which the good citizens are supposed to be living. So uh, this is how I see it. And... Uh, People have to be involved and uh, be the youth or the, the, the different people have to be involved in the democratic processes. Uh, election is just a one step, but before people go to the election, people should be there checking, inquiring, uh, controlling, uh, raising the awareness. And I think that this is, this is what people should be doing. Mm. Okay, according to a research carried out by the Marcuson Institute, it states that there are always international actors when it comes to a country trying to uh, bring about democratic governance in their respective nations. So now, how do you term this, given that most elections, uh, most African countries are trying as much as possible to be independent? Yeah. It, uh, last time we had uh, when we had a debate, and uh, you know it was a very interesting element. For, I think it was Ella. Is that gave uh, I gave, uh, It was the, I spoke about that a bit, but it was the one who really spoke about it. And it was it's a very uh, important piece when in the in the conversation about democracy in mm. Africa. Uh, the, we have to know that uh, the system uh, in which we are is called uh, neocolonialism. Mm -hmm. And then Kwame Nkrumah wrote a book on that in 1965. And then when he was defining neocolonialism, he was talking about leaders in power and then whose policies and then uh, were, uh, uh, were conceived uh, from outside forces and imposed on African leaders. Mm -hmm. The same thing is happening when we, when we are looking at the uh, with our election in Africa. Uh, to mention, for instance, the case of France, uh, France wants to control its former colonies, and then France will do everything possible in order to impose uh, the, the candidates that are going to advance the hegemony and then the neocolonial agenda of mm -hmm. France. Uh, that's why 
Our friends supported uh, the former president of Mali, Ibeka, and that's why France is opposed to Asimi Goita. Uh, because uh, our friends want to see uh, in power uh, Makisal or somebody who can come from Makisal's rank. Uh, uh, and then France does not want Usman Sonko, who is uh, the rising star of, 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 of politics in Senegal, to be in power because he's a nationalist and, he's, mm -hmm. and then somehow he's advancing Pan-Africanism. Mm -hmm. So we see that and then it is happening over and over and then again like i said uh but the same way those who want to see democracy to triumph in the society uh the, if the burden is on uh, on them that's the same way the burden is on them mm -hmm. or to reduce the, the nuclear interferences of france or any nuclear power in the domestic affairs of africa or in the organization of elections in africa Thank you so much, Dr. Nyaka. We have recently just been joined by uh, Mr. Fa Evris Tayong. He is a political analyst joining us all the way from the southwest region of Cameroon. You're welcome, sir. Well, thanks very much. It's my pleasure. I apologize for coming in late. Uh, probably I had uh, some little bohalas and booya. Mm -hmm. But I think um, I'm happy being with you on the program. It's my pleasure being here today. Okay, the first question I'd like to ask you this afternoon is uh, uh, Angolans today are heading to the polls to vote for the next president after incumbent uh, President Joao Lorenzo is heading in for a second term. And of course, they are equally going to vote for members of their National Assembly. Do you really think that these elections that are about to be held there in Angola as well as others that have held on the African continent could cause, possibly uh, be serve as a litmus test for democracy? crazy on the continent mr far every yeah yeah yes i was saying i think mm -hmm. um, right on sir yeah i think angola we don't have a good history for democracy um it's the same kind of one for sadek uh, for other countries a little bit um within the sadek zone um south africa is doing well but not very well as per se Okay, we've just got indications that the network issues are really not the best at uh, uh, Mr. Fa Evis Tayong's end. But we're going to quickly ride on with Dr. Nyaka. Dr. Nyaka, you earlier mentioned that African leaders uh, don't have the burden to carry alone because other parties have to, to play a role in order to ensure that uh, elections on the African continent possibly lead to democracy and the one that even the future generations can uh, be able to be proud of. So what measures do you think, apart from all this, uh, what role does African leaders have to play? Because definitely they are the ones that guide uh, the country through all this. Uh, I, like I said in the beginning, uh, answering one of your first questions, I spoke about how uh, the, from the one-party system to the multi-party uh, system in Africa, mm. uh, we can see that Africa is changing. Mm. So, of course, we may uh, see leaders uh, mm. ruling with iron fist, uh, uh, like uh, Patrick Stallone in Benin, uh, even though uh, we are in uh, in the context of multiple multi-party system uh we can see alessandra manwatara in ivy coast uh ruling like a king even though there are many other political parties you now that exist mm -hmm. uh so we this this is what we see uh, uh but uh there are some leaders and then i've given some examples uh like jonathan goodluck who knew we lost the election and then who could have stayed in power, but who, who thought about it, but who understood that it was an uphill battle, and then who decided in order to relinquish power. Mm -hmm. So we have some positives, uh, some positive examples on the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. So uh, we cannot, uh, uh, in the case of South Africa, I think Felix was talking about South Africa. In the case of South Africa, uh, even though uh, many people seem to be disappointed uh, with uh, what the ANC is doing as a, as a, as a, as a leading political party. Uh, 
but we know that over there democracy mm. is strong really it's really functioning and uh within the anc uh, lost the trust uh, of his uh, is of, of his party then they asked him to leave power uh, same thing happened to zuma and then today we have Cyril Ramaphosa who is there as the president mm -hmm. of, of south africa mm -hmm. and they're going to go i think this year uh, to organize a uh, 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 to, to see who is going to be the leader of the ANC, and then whoever becomes the leader, then is going to likely to become the president of South Africa. Over there, the system is functioning. So, uh, uh, so we want to see many examples like that on the continent of Africa, and then we want to see leaders who should understand that the cry of uh, the African masses, because today there is a new awakening of the Pan-African consciousness on the continent of Africa, uh, we can see that many African masses, uh, the youth, many other people, they want a new Africa, and then therefore leaders should understand that they need to adjust in order to uh, advance, you know, the interests of the, the needs of the people. Thank you immensely for that elaborate contribution. You earlier said that most of our colonial masters are still trying to uh, control the various heads of state in power. But then, uh, away from that, how can Africans hold elections without interference from uh, their, their possible uh, colonial masters? Can you repeat that my net was was acting up here so what can you repeat your question please yes i was saying in line with what you earlier said that uh former colonial masters are still trying in as much as possible to to impact uh various elections that are held uh in different countries what do you think africans can do in order to hold elections free of the interference uh, of, of their former colonial masters yeah, okay yeah the first, uh, the first element is that people have to raise the awareness Mm -hmm. uh, and then against uh, neocolonialism, this is what we're doing. This is what you are doing, uh, Sharon, and with uh, your, your, your this channel and many others uh, on different channels. Those who believe uh, in a new Africa, we mm -hmm. have to raise the awareness uh, because we are. If we say that we are independent, mm -hmm. we should be able to be proud to be independent. And then we should be able to do things in order to reduce the interference of the of, of the new, new colonial forces. Mm. So that is the first thing that we have to do. So when we have many people in the country uh, or in the countries uh, who uh, are willing uh, to fight for their freedoms, who are willing to die for their liberty, who are willing to defend, you know, the you know the 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 uh, the, the, the uh, the, the countries, you know, from uh, nuclear interferences, and uh, then we can hope uh, to see uh, that uh, they can really act as uh, good citizens, they can act as people uh, who are going to do things in a very independent mm -hmm. way. That is my, uh, my, the first thing that I see. Uh, the second element uh, is that uh, people have to reduce the dissensions in the society. Mm -hmm. It is because the dissensions exist. It is because we have not resolved our differences. Uh, that's why external forces can play some against the others. So it means that this is going to be on the leaders and the people who are not in power to understand that at least we can agree on a on a, on, a, on some 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 common ground and then when we do that then you know we should be uh, working in order to reduce the interference of the of the of the of, of the europeans the uh, the third element is to see justice in the society as uh, justice for all not for some and then we can see number four we can see and I've mentioned that in the beginning, a fair redistribution of resources. It is also a mechanism to reduce the dissensions in the society. When we do that, then we can say, you know what, we, uh, we, we, we can see that the European may not uh, succeed in the desire to come and manipulate the elections or manipulate you know, the electoral process or 
uh, trying to interfere in the electoral processes in Africa. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for those three steps. But then I would like to ask you, we have uh, seen records of uh, uh, pre-elections as well as post-elections violence in, in different African countries. How can this be, be put to an end, given the fact that it's this population uh, that have been affected that have to vote for a new president? Uh, can you repeat, repeat your question, please? Yeah, I was I was saying that we have we have seen records of uh, of colonial uh, pre elections as well as post elections in different African countries across the continent. But then uh, these elections, these persons uh, that are being tortured or being uh, violated upon their rights are being uh, damned with are persons that have to vote for the new president. How do you how do you uh, what's your take on this? Okay, maybe it's, maybe I'm not sure if I understand it, but. Uh... Uh, I think it goes by, uh, it, uh, it boils down to uh, justice in the society. Uh, it, it boils down to uh, doing uh, what needs to be done in order to uh, reinforce uh, a sense of justice mm -hmm. and then a sense of inclusion in the society. Mm -hmm. So when uh, uh, we uh, understand that uh, uh, the citizens who, are, who have been uh, oppressed or the citizen who are victim of uh, discrimination and abuses are not foreigners, but they are also members of the society. Mm -hmm. And then the person who is in power has to understand that uh, the policies has to become, has to, to be there for everyone. This is what I was talking about, justice for all. And then I think that uh, that's the only way uh to you know to contribute uh to advance uh, to the advancement of democracy in the society don't know if i understood your question mm -hmm. Okay, so the question i'd like to ask yeah. you before we quickly wrap up today's edition is um this uh this persons for example we have uh, the arrest and imprisonment possible imprisonment of uh, opposition figures so to say even the populace that go to the streets to probably uh violate or say protest what they are not happy with say if the government have to organize some kind of reconciliation between uh, the population and those in power would this bring about a stop to uh, this election violence that actually takes place in different african countries yeah, yeah it is not about the organization of national reconciliation fora it is not it is uh, the, the principle is important mm -hmm. but uh, before the principle uh, we have to have we have to see uh, sincerity mm -hmm. you know if we have to see sincerity and if people who if you the, those who are in power wants to organize mm -hmm. those type of uh, uh national reconciliation fora they have to be sincere and then it is when they are sincere then they allow everyone to come and speak uh, in the case of africa when the Babo Laurent organized uh, uh the national reconciliation forum uh you know even though we welcomed uh, uh, the, uh, the, the the National Reconciliation Forum, uh, even though some thought that the National Reconciliation was a great success. But there was one thing that uh, I say, uh, which is the following. In, during the National Reconciliation Forum in Ivory Coast, there was no victimizer, and all the people who spoke, all of them, they presented themselves as victims. So then that's that's an issue mm -hmm. so when i talk about sincerity people have to, people have to be sincere enough uh to, to see like a real conversation in the country and those who made mistakes should be able you know to confess them their the faults and then so that you know people can have like a they can try to think about a new social contract so that is the most important thing and then if uh, the conditions are met and then if uh, the various groups are, have, have agreed on the modus operandi of the national reconciliation forum now what we're going to see is going to become uh, a logical outcome of the preconditions mm -hmm. of the successful preconditions uh, uh, that led or that will lead uh, to a successful national reconciliation forum 
in your opinion, what do you think is the way forward from all this? Uh, uh, first of all, uh, we cannot go back to one to the one party system. I know I've seen many Africans saying, oh, you know, uh, the democracy is not working, uh, but we have to go back to the one party system or we have to go back to the pre-colonial political systems. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a king, and then uh, when he dies, mm -hmm. he was replaced up by mm -hmm. his son. So I don't, I do not agree with that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that democracy has become uh, today a universal value, a cherished by people everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we may not agree on the uh, on the on, on, on the, we may not agree on the definition of democracy or on the definitions of democracy uh, but even in china they have the way of conducting the affairs of the state uh, using uh, some democratic principles even though people do not have many parties uh, the way uh, we can see uh, the way it, uh, it, we see uh, the way we do some other countries like function Mm -hmm. uh, so that is the first thing. So we cannot go back to the one-party system. Number two, uh, the democratic system as it is can be perfected. And uh, therefore, uh, everyone has uh, to be uh, has to be working in order to advance the cause of democracy. Mm -hmm. Number three, for democracy you know, to be sustainable, uh, there should be uh, a form of economic uh, freedom, a form of economic prosperity in the country that leads me to talk about the mm -hmm. fair redistribution of resources in the society mm -hmm. now the, the other point now i want to say is that as africans we should be thinking about a new democratic system that can take uh, the best of the european models and that can adapt it you know to some uh, some positive things of the pre-colonial uh, political system in africa uh, the best in the European uh, democratic system uh, uh, is at uh, first uh, uh, we have the existence of political parties. Number two, we have the organization of elections. Mm -hmm. uh, number three, we have the separation of powers. Uh, number four, uh, uh, we have uh, the engagement of the civil society. So we can take those elements and then and then try to see how we can combine them with a very important value like in, in the African societies mm -hmm. uh, according uh, to the communal life in Africa, mm -hmm. according to the African collectivism and according to the Ubuntu philosophy that I promote, mm -hmm. which is consensus. Mm -hmm. That's one value, consensus. Mm -hmm. So people can have all the political parties in the society, but they have to agree on the on, the, on a common ground. Mm -hmm. For instance, the preservation of the African country, the preservation of our, our resources, uh, the reduction of corruption in the society, uh, then the satisfaction of the needs of the people, mm -hmm. the reduction of enrichment in the society, these are so of the elements around which we can build consensus irrespective of the the dissenting of, of ideologies in the society and then of course i spoke about the second principle according to the african communal life is inclusion mm -hmm. and then i mentioned that when i was talking about the fathers so mm -hmm. this is for me the way forward when we want to engage the conversation about democracy in the world and in africa Okay, that's a very powerful one. Before we wrap up today's edition on this very much uh, interesting topic, I'd like to ask you, what if you had to give a message to African leaders and heads of, heads of state and government, so to say, uh, regarding democratic governance in Africa, what would that be? Oh, yes, there's, uh, uh, it, is diff it will be difficult for them uh, to, uh, to prevent uh, 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 to prevent democracy in Africa. Because, like I said, mm -hmm. uh, things are changing in Africa. Mm -hmm. And then one and then a leader can come and do a put into place a fascist regime. Uh, Mr. Ouattara said himself that 
he wished there was no democracy in Africa. In Africa because he said that himself, he does not believe in democracy. Mm -hmm. uh, there are people like that, but uh, he has to deal with the people. <laughs> the, despite the reproaching, there are people in the streets. At times, there are people who are denouncing him. So there is no way uh, people can prevent uh, you know, the, the evolution of democracy in the society. And then as history is, uh, is uh, watching everyone, and then those African leaders, they can have the opportunity to become history makers. They, can have, they have the opportunity to become, to enter a history uh, by understanding what the people need. Africa wants sovereignty. Africa wants uh, uh, economic and political independence. And Africa wants the end of corruption or the reduction of corruption. So I suggest that the leaders who come there, they do the right thing. They may be looking, according to the Carpidium philosophy, about the now. They may not be thinking about projecting themselves in the future. But they can look at the example of Blaise Compaoré, mm -hmm. 27 years in power, enjoying power and life, uh, oppressing and killing his own people. He never thought that one day there would be a time when the people of Burkina Faso were going to rise up mm -hmm. and, and put an end to, his, to the regime. He has to go and change his nationality, take the nationality of his wife, uh, of, uh, the nationality of his wife, when he went to Ivory Coast, the country that it is it, like he tried to destabilize and then to which he brought a war and we can see him uh, like defeated by history, living like a poor life in Ivory Coast. And now that guy is going to be, has been judged, he has been uh, uh, convicted, uh, not only by the tribunal of Burkina Faso, but also by the tribunal of the history. So mm -hmm. for us, all those elements is important when people think about the legacy and they think about meeting the needs of the people. This is the type of leaders that we want to see in Africa. Or we want, as we want to quote uh, uh, Gandhi, uh, each one of us uh, should be the change that uh, we want to see in the society. Okay, with special precision to Angola, who uh, whom are heading to the polls today to uh, decide on their future, what would you tell them? Oh, listen, if they, whoever wins should become president. If uh, Lorenzo uh, loses the election, uh, you know, he should understand that, uh, uh, you know, he has to relinquish power. But more important uh, than that is that uh, as everyone is talking about a tight election, that it means that when or if uh, Lorenzo wins the election, mm -hmm. it means that he has to do some fundamental changes in the society. Mm -hmm. And it cannot just be his own party. It has to, he has to try uh, uh, I call that, uh, we don't see that yet in Africa, but I call that conversation on governance. Uh, it's not like National Reconciliation Forum, which is about peace and the reconciliation. The national, uh, like, uh, like a national governance like con convention uh, should be uh, put into place and then invite uh, various representatives uh, of, uh, the, of the Angolan society so that they can discuss about what needs to be done when it comes to economy, to politics, to culture, to society, to spirituality, mm -hmm. so that they can have another consensus on that. That is, that is, that's another way of ruling African countries. Because if you don't do that, then it's going to be difficult. So let's say, like even uh, like a uh, you know, Ruto who won in, in Kenya, it is the same thing. You cannot even, you did not even have fifty-one percent. Mm -hmm. It means that like a fourth, more than 49% mm -hmm. of the Ken of, of Kenyans are voted against him. Half of the country. How are you going to come and impose the, the will of people who are not even 51% over people who are a little bit above 49% of the society? Mm -hmm. That's why inclusion and consensus are important in the conversation that we are having. So even if he wins, 
it is not sufficient because you need to govern. And then what can you do that you have not done in five years after going after the Santos family? And mm -hmm. still, people think that the election is a tight election. So it means that you have to level up. You have to try and do things differently and better. What does it mean? That you cannot have all the intelligences in your, in your camp, then you have to go and reach out. And when you reach out, then you are, in, you are including people in what you want to do. And this is how, uh, that's the type of advice I will give to those African leaders. Okay. Thank you immensely, Dr. Nyaka, for joining me on today's edition of Voices. Thank you very much, Sharon. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of today's edition of Voice Over your Pan African channel for you media. I have been Jix Nabuse for presentation. Of course, same company of our programs. <laughs>